In this tutorial, we'll, we'll make two divs sit side by side in CSS. Okay, so I just have a simple example here with uh, two divs, two empty divs, and this is gonna be box one and this is box two. Right, so box one is this one with the orange background and the other one has a green background. So now let's say we wanna make them sit side by side, right? Because this is the default layout. These are so-called block level elements, right? A div is a block level element, meaning it takes up the entire width, right? So it sort of kicks out the other element. Well, the other element is actually also a block level element. So it's also gonna take up the entire width, right? So what you get is sort of a vertical flow. Right, but now we wanna make them sit horizontally side by side. And actually the best way to do that today is with flexbox so we could use the body element as a parent element because you need to get you need to have a flex container or maybe you just have a parent element that you created yourself let's call that container right so now this is the parent element of both of them and what you can do is you can say container we can say display flex so then it becomes the flex container and you know the flexbox functionalities will be unlocked and we actually get some def we actually get a default layout which is the following so if i refresh here they will actually sit side by side this is the default layout in flexbox and right? so flexbox is really the most important concept in css i think so it's really important that you that you master css i have a whole course on that it only takes a couple of hours and it will benefit you for the rest of your career so definitely check it out the link is in the description now they're sitting side by side but now we may want to have some space between them and actually there is a property for that in flexbox we can call we can use column gap and then maybe we want like 20 pixels of space and now we have 20 pixels of space between them you could also do it in a different way so in the past people used margin for this so we could add some margin on the right side right we could say margin on the right of 20 pixels right so then this orange one gets margin on the right and then you get the same result column gap is a little bit better because um with these margins you're gonna get you're gonna run into issues with responsiveness right because eventually the, the viewport on mobile for example will get smaller and smaller um you don't want to have them right so eventually they're going to get a vertical flow again they're going to be stacked on mobile but then you're still left with that weird margin on the right right so there are certain reasons why the column gap property is better so this is one way of getting um them to sit side by side Let's actually remove that. There is another way. We can also make them, um, right? I just said that they are block level elements, meaning their display property is set to block. We can also set it to something else called inline block. And the name already says that they will sit in line. There's, they, still, they still have certain block level um, features, but now they will sit in the same line, right? And actually they will get some default space as well, right? So this is the second technique. Another technique is a bit old school with floats, right? You, sh you probably shouldn't be using floats today anymore. We have flexbox. Let's actually reset here. So what you could also do is you could say this one should float to the left and this one should float to the right. And then they will also sit, uh, well, side by side, there's a lot of space between them because it will, they will both sit in the corner. So maybe you can add some, uh, well, they're, si they're still sitting in that container. So we can add some padding on the left and right side. So zero on top and bottom. And then let's say 100 pixels on left and right side to sort of push them closer to each other. Right? You can play around with that. It's probably best to just use Flexbox. So make sure you learn Flexbox. It's completely covered in my course. Only takes a couple hours and you'll walk away with much more clarity on CSS. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.